Now here's a proposition. Since the world may or may not end come Friday, December 21st, 2012, I'm going to throw out a video idea. And this is sort of how I intend to make my last Mr. Wonka 7 video or something like that. Essentially, it's this. I may review WCW Nitro Thursday for a change, since I'm just making reviews of WWF and WWE. It'd be nice to mix it up by throwing some WCW for a change. Plus, since the whole concept is I'm going old school, why not go old school enough to target an extinct company and merchandising brand in a way an extinct product which sounds kind of interesting so if I review an episode of WCW that I might like and it's gonna be Nitro not Thunder cuz I wanna get as top-notch as possible so maybe I'll do something from 96 especially around the summer where you had Hogan and the NWO first starting out. You had the Olympics. You had all sorts of awesome shit. <sighs> so that's what I could go with it. Next, let's just start with the review. This is, again, going to be the first episode of Raw for the year. Except instead of being 99, this is 98. So I'm going even deeper this time. Okay, let's see. Well, first off, the first few minutes of the show is Austin saying a bunch of crazy shit. Essentially, he's hearing rumors that someone's going to attack him for before the Royal Rumble and niggas have beef with him. So he's going to start stunner, doing some Stone Cold stunners on everybody. He doesn't give a fuck. He wants to get at that person before that person gets to him. Potentially ruins his chances to win the Rumble. Alright, we got Farouk, also known as Ron Simmons, damn that's right, versus the world's most dangerous man, uh, what's his face, Ken Shamrock, damn, I, I always forget these niggas' names, that's how you know I'm out of it, but alright, this is a fight that's full of aggression, it covers a good amount of time for television. Not exactly SmackDown time where you get matches that last like two commercial breaks, but this is some quality shit, and of course, it gets interrupted. Oh, it doesn't get interrupted, actually. It does have its ending. However, all I know is that The Rock shows his face, since in the beginning it was everyone from Nation of Domination except The Rock, but then he shows up later on, trying to say some shit to Shamrock. Oh yeah, Sham Shamrock won that fucking match. Damn. Where the fuck are my marbles? So Shamrock won that match against Farouk. And as a result, The Rock was basically like, Alright, this means that you're going to face me for the Intercontinental title. I hope you realize who you're dealing with. And Austin comes and he gives both Shamrock and The Rock a Stone Cold Stunner. So, they both get their ass beat, essentially. That move is essentially a assassin move, because it just comes in out of nowhere and swiftly knocks the person out. It's a like, ninja-type move in that way. Next, and this is something featuring Jim Cornette, who doesn't have a strong appearance in this show, but for the beginning, this is actually kind of cool. We have an NWA World Heavyweight title match, which, even in 98 standards, that's pretty fucking dated, since most people nowadays that win the NWA title are like, what, indie stars, guys that can't make it to the big three shows, so they 
compete in for that title. It really is a dying thing, even back in the late nineties, and it's so much worse now. But our we have Cole Cabana not too long ago as our champion, along with Adam Pierce. So you shouldn't be complaining too much, I guess. But this is Jeff Jarrett versus Blackjack, and it is a pretty interesting match. It kind of has the feel that's not like the WWE's Attitude Era or WWF's Attitude Era. It does have that throwback feeling. In fact, it's a little bit of a hybrid just because of what kind of setting we're dealing with. But Jared eventually wins because Cornette screws the other guy, Blackjack. And even though he's celebrating, he's a new champion... Funny to think that four years later he's in TNA doing this kind of shit. He gets a Stone Cold Stunner treatment. Oh, that's what happens. So he gets stunned as well. Next is a tag team match between two teams whose names I have no idea. And one of the guys, he's really cool. He's in the background. He's not really in the tag team. He's supposed to be this hippie guy. You should see this for yourself. Just type it up and see this match. I mean, both those tag teams are just not remarkable. They seem like bad imitations of other tag teams. Although this is 98, so... They might be revolutionary, I don't know, I don't really care. These guys aren't the ones, guys, that we celebrate when we look back at the Attitude Era. However, the hippie guy's actually an interesting character, because he's supposed to be, like, this non-violence guy that feels like he's compelled to use violence to get his revolution going. Originally being a charismatic revolution, now being a violent one, using these two... I guess Contra, Recon, G.I. Joe type tag team niggas. That's really interesting. It fucking... It's a... It's a not, not the match itself. I couldn't give a shit about the match. Or the competitors. But the guy's commentary was really entertaining. His, like, Weasley voice is... There is this kind of dandyism. Almost a mystery vibe. Any of you who study to pick up artistry movement know who Mystery and Neil Strauss, those guys are. They're they're like dandies in a way. But they're dandies that you like in a way, cause they're they're effeminate in an attractive way. So I guess this is how this kind of guy is it's a hippie that's trying to start a revolution. Still, it's filler. It doesn't really contribute to much. It's just the truth. And this match, so someone comes in between this really big, tall, seven-foot guy. And basically, the hippie guy's controlling him. He has that control authority over this guy. He'll attack at any time, but he'll only stop through his command. So that's kind of cool. Next, we get to see DX draw a promo to Owen Hart, who was screwed by Triple H. He was about to win the title from Shawn Michaels not too long ago, I think from an in-your-house setting. But no, he didn't win. He didn't fucking win. So, because Triple H got involved. And as a result, Shawn Michaels got the victory. It's It is sad, but... Because Owen Hart really deserved a world title before he went. And he went a little too early. But you know what? Owen Hart is... He has so much layering to his character. So I was feeling this. Especially for my last SmackDown review where his character took on a completely different and fatal turn. So that's kind of interesting to think about. Here he's just badass. He's like... He has a black heart, a heart of darkness in a way. And he has like no mercy. 
eventually he gets into a match later on against this Puerto Rican guy. It's sort of like this... You know how the Nation of Domination is related to black people? It has Farouk, The Rock, D'Lo Brown, amongst many others. Well, this is kind of like that, but Puerto Rican, a bunch of Boricuas. I think they call themselves Boricuas if they're... They're male, because they're all that's masculine, but then again, I shouldn't be like speaking about Spanish because I'm one of those guys that completely assimilates and forgets his original Spanish language, so who am I to talk? But these guys are really they're really revolutionary, even at that time, because they're like rapping, and this is ninety-eight. The only person the only other person I know that did that around this time was K Quick, also known as R Truth. There was a rapping tag team around ninety four, ninety three, and they had their WrestleMania role. But there you go, Puerto Rican Spanish rappings in the intro. It's that Spanish stuff, so it adds a flair that's different from the white rapping of Cena and black rapping of. Our truth is southern rapping the dirty self <sighs> dirty self East Coast rap and all that shit. I mean there's different kinds of rap. But I don't really listen to rap that much. Obviously I'm not very skilled in understanding that genre. I'm more of a rock and metal guy. But if he does Owen Hart does beat this Puerto Rican guy in a match, and it, it is a good match by raw television standards around this time. And that'd be like you know a five-minute match that's on point. Not a lot of botching, a lot of cool moves are being thrown around, but this is more of a physical match. Owen gets the win. And he tries to approach Triple H, tries to kick his ass, but he gets jumped by the other guys. And then eventually he's dragged to Triple H, and they harass him even more. And then Triple H pays him off for doing that shit, because that's kind of what he wanted. Alright. We get to see a Paul Bearer promo, which... Yeah, Paul Bear looks really blonde right now, so I thought he I thought he was a natural brunette. Or maybe he is a natural brunette. I don't know. I usually picture him with dark hair and a dark Adolf Hitler style mustache. I didn't know about the fluctuations in his hair color over time. That was that's foreign knowledge to me. Here I am talking about hair color and shit. Alright. So next, and this is another match featuring, uh, what's Sable in the background. Looking back, it's kind of hard to imagine that she ends up marrying Lesnar, but this is, this is reality. This is the world we live in. She's had a role back, way back here, and she eventually gets Hitched to Lesnar, who's young and fresh. Alright. Don't have a lot of time here. But event this is Mark Mara versus Tony... Tony Blank? It's... It's Tony... Tony something, I don't... I don't give a damn about either of these guys. I don't give a damn about this storyline. Again, these Raws aren't perfect. I would get rid of some shit. But I'm about to go to part two of this. So, stick around and you'll hear the magic words in the end.